times today. Uh, Clay Nash is going to be here um, on the 17th and 18th. And on the 17th, we're going to be meeting with leadership. Uh, it might be at my house. We haven't determined where. On the 18th, it'll be here Sunday morning. And I encourage that. Uh, I'd love to have everybody that, that's a part of this who calls this their church family to be here that day. Really need everybody to be here because I want to. Uh, we may be changing our alignment that we have uh, in, in that's over. So I don't know how to say it. Uh, just our alignment, and so and I don't want to go into it any further. Now I'll just leave it that way. So anyway, if 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 you can be here, we really need everybody here. I need everybody to be here to be a part of that day, and to uh, I want to see how the body receives Clay and how we interact with him. Okay. And Tom has an announcement about uh, next week. Before next week? Uh, yeah, yes. So who's going to be here on August 17th? 18th. Oh, and 18th. Say so, uh, 18th. Oh, I'll make sure. Okay. It, no, I was asking, who is it though? Tell me who it is. Clay Nash. Clay Nash. Okay. So remember that. That's, that's real important for everybody to try to be here. Uh, I was really hoping to see more people, but a lot of our people got up and went outside. Yeah, they did. That's okay. Um, I guess it's been two and a half years ago, or maybe more, Pastor Tom approached me about uh, doing a uh, couple's ministry here at church. At the time, I said, you know, I, I, I'm just not sure I want to do that. Not, not at the time, not then. But uh, we've prayed a lot more about it, and I guess for the last number of months, we've talked, uh, talked about it a bit. So we're going to be starting a couple's ministry here at church. Uh, for married couples, or if you're a couple about to be married, you're welcome. Uh, and... We're going to have a meeting after church, next week after church. So the idea here is, if you're interested in helping with the couple's ministry uh, here at church, come see me, tell me that you are, if you are, and we want to have a meeting after church next week. Now, I, we don't want this to be just a, one more couple's ministry that you see at churches where, you know, we're not going to say, we're going to, every six weeks we're going to do this or every whatever. We may only do it every quarter. But we want it to be something special. We want to make it something really big. And we want to get everyone interested. So if you're interested in working with the couples ministry, see me sometime after church today and tell me we're going to have a meeting with everyone that's interested after church next Sunday, okay? Amen. Okay, see, Pastor Tom, if that's you. All right. It's so good to be in the house of God today. I'm so refreshed by uh, just the flow of the Spirit of God in the house. Um, if you would stand your feet, I don't have a long message today. At least it didn't feel very long. And um, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you, Lord. Stand your feet. And if you have your word, I'd like you just to hold it up, hold it near to your heart, uh, one of the two, something like that. And just repeat with me. If you don't have it, you just put your hand over your heart. Because of course, that's where we're supposed to hide it anyway. It's in our heart. Alright, this is the inspired word of God. That settles it. I believe it. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. It is alive and powerful in me. This word is a lamp unto my feet. By it, my mind is renewed. By this word, I am transformed. By this word, I am transformed. Saved, Saved, healed, healed delivered, delivered, filled, filled fulfilled, fulfilled, complete, complete whole, whole, victorious, victorious and, changed and changed into your likeness. The Father, open my ears to hear this word and my heart to respond to this word and help Pastor Tom preach really simple. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. That part about simple is really kind of a silly statement because that's pretty much what I do anyway. All right. I'd like you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse um, 10 and 11. And we're going to share this together. And uh, so I'd like you to just read along with me. Paul is writing... Um, to he's he's writing to the Corinthian church. They got they had a lot of issues. They had uh, a man sleeping with his father's wife. They had a lot of junk going on in the church, and he was addressing the issues in First Corinthians chapter uh, through, well throughout the book. First Corinthians was his first letter. Second Corinthians is where he starts uh, kind of coming back to it. 
But he talks about in verse 7 that, that if that man has you know, repented, that we're to forgive him, lest he be uh, swelled up or over, overwhelmed with over much sorrow, just overwhelmed with sorrow. And he says that in verse 8, we need to confirm our love towards him. And then in verse 10, he says, To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave for your sakes, I forgive it in the person of Christ. Of, of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. He is saying here that we need to forgive, we need to restore, and he said, lest Satan get an, uh, an, an advantage of us. Take advantage that he get an advantage of us. And he says, we are not ignorant of his devices. And the word devices means his thoughts, his plans, his uh, evil purposes that he has against us. So, what he's saying is that we need to be people that we recognize what the enemy's plans and thoughts are, and that we know how to, to avoid them, to sidestep them, and to uh, get ahead of the enemy, uh, his plans. And, you know, church, as we do these things, we actually keep our hearts uh, pliable, soft, and in, in alignment with the Father's heart. Um, we need to remember that when he throws these fiery darts at us, that we have a shield of faith that we lift, but we also have actions that we take. You know, it's faith without works is what? Yeah. It's dead being alone. We can believe we have the victory. We can believe that Jesus has given the victory. But there's things that we need to do too. And what I'm talking about today is coming in the opposite spirit. And I'm going to, I'm going to go at it from two different directions. And I pray that as, as we hear this, 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 who has heard of that, that phrase, coming in the opposite spirit? Probably most everybody in the house. Let me see if you've heard that, coming in the opposite spirit. A lot of people have heard that. All right? Uh, I was 25 years old, or 25 years old in the Lord, before I ever heard anybody talk about it. You know, we might have done it. We might have uh, actually uh, operated it, but just didn't know what it was called. We didn't know that it was a spiritual principle. So what we need to do is understand this thing about uh, coming in the opposite spirit. It's very simple to understand, but it's not so simple to implement. All right, now I'm in Ephesians 4, 27 and 28, and I want to read this scripture here too, and then we're going to get into a couple of stories. All right. Ephesians 4, 27, it says, Neither give place to the devil. To give place means don't give him any room. Don't give the devil any room in your life, in your home. And then it goes on to say, let him that stole steal no more. I think it's pretty interesting that it doesn't say, if you have a tr problem with kleptomania, if you're a shoplifter, if you like to steal from people, you need to cut back a little bit. You all notice that? It doesn't say, you need to wean yourself from it. And that's what a lot of people believe that we need to do with sin is to wean ourselves from it. You know, just kind of ease out of it and kind of get a little, you know, just slowly get free of it. That's not what it says here. It says stop. If you've been stealing, stop. Quit taking stuff that's not yours. Stop it. And I think it's interesting that God doesn't, he doesn't mince words here. Um, he says, let him steal, the stole steal no more. And we know that the, the thief, the Greek word for thief is klepto, which is the devil. He's the klepto, the original klepto. And we get the word kleptomaniac from that. All right. It says, don't steal anymore, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. Now, you think about it. When people steal, they want to get something that costs them nothing. Right? They just want to get it free. Five-finger discount. Just take it and run with it. Okay? But he says, if, you're, if you've stolen, don't do it anymore. As a matter of fact, don't take the easy road out, but get a job. Yeah. And start working. And start being productive in society. Then take your money and buy the things. Most of the things people steal, they, it's just things they want. I'm not talking, other than people that are starving to death in India, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, uh, what, which one was, was it Ashley Judd that was arrested for shoplifting? You all remember that? A couple of years ago, one of the, one of the uh, uh, celebrities, one of these celebrities got all kinds of money. And they were arrested, was it, was it Ashley Judd? Well, what was it? One owner around her. And she was, she was arrested for shoplifting. Does she have a need to steal? She can buy anything she wants. So that it wasn't the issue of it was a need. It was just the thrill of taking something that, didn't, that wasn't hers and to get away with it. And they're saying, quit it. Stop it. 
get a job. She had a job. Maybe she needed to work part time at night. I don't know. And, and, and get a job. And then it says, and then it goes on to say um, that think the thing which is good, working with your hands, that's a good thing. That he may have to give him that has needs. So now what we've done is we've switched from taking something that cost us nothing for a want. Now we're working, laboring, and doing it the honest the way that God would have us to do it. And now we're giving to people in need. Instead of taking, stealing for once, personal pleasure, self-satisfaction for the thrill, now we're giving to people that we've worked for and labored for. You see the complete reversal. Where we were taking, now we're giving. So it's a complete reversal coming in the opposite spirit is to remember how do we break, if you have a, a, a tendency to want to steal things, and this is more prevalent, you can want to steal someone's identity. You can steal someone's, uh, uh, their favor, their position at work. You can try to bump them out. <clears throat> That's not, God said don't do that. Don't try to steal what is not yours. But work and Give and then turn around and give to people who have needs. And so we see that this has taken place. Now, uh, then we go into Matthew 5 with verse 43 and 44. And it says this. This is number 3. All right. Matthew 5 verses 43 and 44. It says, You have heard it has been said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that despitefully use you, and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. It says to pray for those. When people hate us, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to love them. We come in the very opposite spirit that they come at us in. If they curse us, we bless them. Have you ever had anybody speaking evil over you? Somebody telling lies on you? Well, then you turn around and you speak blessings over them. And we come in the opposite spirit. And it's not just a ploy to conquer them. What it is, it, 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 part, part of it is uh, that we actually keep our hearts right with God. Because we can pray, God, they've been lying on me. They, they've taken this from me. They've done that. And we can say, God, get them. Get them. Sick of God. Take care of them. A, a nuke them, annihilate them, whatever. And God, God, let's say that God answers our prayers and, and you see their marriage fall apart or they lose their job or things start happening bad in their life and they were like, oh yeah, they got theirs. And God may actually have intervened in some way, but you know what? Our heart can grow hard in the process. Did you know that? That as we pray blessings over someone, it keeps us in that position of loving them, caring for them, and actually wanting their, the best that God has for them to be active in their life. That's, it keeps our hearts right with God. So we need to be aware that this isn't just something to win the battle. It's something to keep our hearts right. Amen? So we come at the opposite spirit. Okay? And I think I have one other example of that. Uh, it's in Luke 6, 29 and 30. And it's basically the same thing. In verse 28, he said, Bless them and curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. You know, when it says pray for them, again, it's not pray, God get them, God make them deal with it, God make them pay, it's pray blessings. Church, as we do that, we're going to see the hand of God move powerfully as we respond in the opposite spirit. And to him that smites you on the one cheek, offer the other also, that instead of re retaliating with a punch or something like that, you say, oh, okay, here, you know, if you smack me on my right cheek, here you have my left one. Um, and then it says, if they've taken something from you, taken your cloak, give him your coat also. So what we see here is uh, a coat is a more, uh, it's a bigger gift, it's, it's a bigger, more costly thing, it's more important. So what he's saying is, if somebody steals from you, I've heard these stories of someone that's been stolen from, and in turn, bless them. Give them something you know somebody stole from you, and maybe you've confronted them and they deny it. Well, in turn, give them something. Return in the opposite spirit that they came to you in. And that will, the Bible says you'll heat coals of fire on their head. And it's, it's not just to say, yeah, I'm going to watch them burn up, because I, I bless them when they were taken from me. It actually, again, keeps our hearts right before God, and it keeps us in a place 
where God can use us and bless us. All right. The devil is, uh, he is a, uh, the ultimate abortionist. Anybody want to agree with that? He takes our destinies, he takes our plans, and he tries to abort them. And I want to give you a couple of examples in the Word about how that he does the same thing, the same truth about coming in the opposite, presenting the opposite that is des that the enemy has designed for us, that we come in the opposite spirit, and we keep the victory, we stay on top, we keep our joy, we keep our relationship with God. Well, the enemy does the same thing with our destinies, with our futures. He comes in, and he presents God will give us a destiny, and he comes in and tries to reverse it so that just the opposite is true. And now you'll, you'll see it as, unfold, as this thing unfolds. That uh, the United States of America, you remember that statue out there in the harbor? What's, what's it called? Statue of Liberty. It says, send this, you're hurting, you're harassed, you're oppressed, you're possessed. Send them all our way. We'll take them all. Right? It's, it's a, we're supposed to be a haven for those who are... Uh, the, the downtrodden. We're supposed to be a caring for those, showing love, and, and we welcome all. But what we've turned into is a nation that slaughters the innocent. We've killed over 60 million babies. And what, what was our destiny to be has been reversed in some to some measure. Now we still we welcome everybody, especially if you're a terrorist. Come on in. I don't care if you're illegal, send them our way, we'll take them all. And it's that you understand. You see how things are getting twisted in our nation. So here we have that our nation has changed. But I believe that it can come back. I believe that our nation can be restored. I believe that our nation can come back to a place where the glory of God is revealed and people are being healed and, and lives are being transformed. And I want to see that. And I've been praying for that. I pray daily, sometimes several times a day, for our nation that God will reverse that. Adam and Eve in the garden. Think about this example. Why, would, why was Adam created? In his fellowship. What was his destiny? To build a church? What was his destiny? To be a, uh, uh, a great preacher? To be a song leader? I mean, I see you get all the animals out there. Now, now sheep, I want you to be at just this right time. You know, when I point to you, you know, can you see that? Here he is. is. Is that his destiny? His destiny was to walk with God. To have fellowship with God. That was his that was his purpose. That's why he was created. So God to have someone to, to talk with and share his heart with and to fellowship with him. And we see that the very destiny, the very thing that he was appointed for, was the enemy came in through lies, through subtleties, through deception, through uh, he, he through calculation. He twisted his thinking and it's Instead of there being unity and intimacy with, with Adam and God, now we see Adam and Eve being uh, asked to leave the garden. Actually, forced to leave the garden. So we see they're, they're, they're not rejected, but they're separated. So everything that was his destiny, just the opposite now is taking place. Y'all follow me? Everything that is so completely the opposite of what God had ordained him and Eve to be is now the reality. Separated. Working out there in the heat and the sweat and briars growing up where he plants. His, his life was not that productive because it's producing th briars and thorns and thistles and all that stuff. And so we see that what God had planned, the enemy twisted and tries to get them to believe that this is my lot in life. And I'm going to tell you that there are people in this, in this place, in this church body, in the, in the world, where God has given you a word, He's given you a vision, He's given you a future, He's given you a, a vision, something you can see that you're supposed to be doing, that you're supposed to be active in, that you're supposed to be pursuing, it's supposed to be alive in you, and through circumstances and situations, the reverse seems to be true. Amen? And so he comes at us with the opposite. He takes the, the word that God has over us and twists it around and presents just the very opposite. And it's up to us to say no. Yeah. It's up to us to say no, I'm not going to accept that. And Adam and Eve, we know the story that, the, you know, they could have just said, well, you know, this is our lot in life. But through uh, 
intimacy and procreation. They had, you know, children get begot children and more and more all the way down to the Redeemer was born through their line. Had to be born. Because they were the only couple. Had to be born through their line. But we see that God redeemed even that mess. God redeemed that mess. Hallelujah. And that intimacy that they were supposed to have now is available for all mankind. So we can see that God will he'll, he'll, He redeems even the worst situations. Now I'm going to look at another one. Joseph. He's a, one of my favorite people in the Bible. He was called to lead. He was called to guide. He was called to administrate. He was called to be an administrator of a nation. Even in some ways a savior of a nation. Because of the, the drought that was coming. And so Joseph was, re- he was set in place by God. He was given two dreams. The visions. And he was... Uh, God spoke to him and said, this is what's going to happen. People are going to bow before you. You're going to be high and lifted up. That everything that, uh, that, that he was designed and destined for, we know the story. It was completely the opposite. The enemy came in. And the only thing he is overseeing is rats in the prison. The only thing he's uh, administrating is, I think I'll eat you for lunch today and I'll eat you tomorrow. That's the only administration he's got going on. That's the only thing he's overseeing in the present. And so we see that, but even in prison, even when he was in his worst place, that he could have shut God down. He could have said, well, God, you're done, you're done with me, I'm done with you. And he could have accepted that that was his lot in life. But he didn't. And even when uh, he had been in prison for so many years, I think it was around 11 years, the, 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 book, the butler and the baker, we know the story, they were thrown in prison too, and he could have said, and, and he could have, they were talking about their dreams. He could have just said, I know what that's all about, but I, I'm done. I'm done with that. But he didn't do that. He kept pressing towards what he knew that God had called him to do. It wasn't dead within him. He didn't let it die. It had been depressed. It had been pushed down. But it was still alive. And when the opportunity came to give that word, he, he shared it. And then two, I think it was like two more years passed after he gave that word. He was still in prison. And so we see that, that Joseph actually came out of that place. And he did lead. And he did guide. He did save a nation. And he did save the Hebrew people. And we see that the enemy... Are you all following me this morning? This is very, this is, this is a very clear word. It's a very simple word. But too many people in God's camp have bought the lies. Too many of us have bought the lies and said, Well, I guess this is it. Well, when God has spoken this, and we see this to be a reality, too many times we accept this and say, well, this is what it's, that's what it's supposed to be. That's right. And what we need to do is just like as God says, to come in the opposite spirit, yeah. recognize that's exactly how the enemy works. Yeah. He presents just the opposite to be true, and we have the option to believe it and accept it or reject it. Amen? Amen? Right. So we have got to be a people that say no to that. I will not settle for less. I will not settle for less than what God has for me. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? You guys are awful quiet today. I guess you all gave it all out a little while ago. Which, that's a good thing, though. All right. I am so almost done. Thank you, Jesus. I heard somebody in the back. Thank you. You must be ready for sub soups, and salads. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> The thing about it is that um, we don't have to accept the devil's reality as, as our reality. You know, there are some men and women of God that <clears throat> have been given abilities to make lots of money. Lots of money. There are people that have been called to be financiers of the kingdom. And it seems like some people, have you noticed that some people, everything they touch just turns to gold? That they can invest in a, in, a, in a garbage dump and all of a sudden it's the hottest garbage dump on the planet. Everybody wants to do business with them. And they're making money like crazy. And what's the deal with that? You know, some people just, they're, they're, they have a, a blessing and anointing and gift from God that everything they touch just prospers and does well. And God's called them to be a financier of the kingdom. And they miss it. And instead of blessing the kingdom and all the people that it entails, they turn it inwardly and bless one family which is their own. And they miss the calling that God has for them, and that's to bless and to finance the kingdom. Amen? So we need to I need to speak that at a, at a business with those better businessmen's luncheons. Alright. 
Thank you, God. I really am almost finished. If the enemy... You know, sometimes this thing about the financial thing is that the enemy through pride, through greediness, through fear causes people to not be what God has called them to be in that, in that area of, of financing the kingdom, the work of the kingdom. All right. Now I want to talk about two things. Um, and then I'm finished. One of them is that, and I shared this Wednesday night, and I said, God, uh, it was like a question was posed to me from the Holy Spirit. And the question was, this past week, was, um, what, do you, what is it you really want? What is it that you, me, person, what do I really want? And my answer was very quick, very, it just, it just boom, it just kind of came out of me. I knew it. I knew it was just very clear. I knew it was from God. And that answer was, everything that I see in your word that is going on in heaven, that the, the, the New Testament church, and even then some, way more than that, that all that God has, a, has appointed and apportioned for us to have, that we actually walk it and live it. That we are a people who have so incredible much love for one another. And so much genuine care for one another. And so so much uh, uh, desire to see others excel. We have so much uh, of the power of God at work. The, the healings and the manifestations and the demonstrations of the, of the, the, the power of God are alive. And, and abundance is being released. Uh, uh, everywhere we turn, where it's a, everywhere we turn, there's abundant supply, abundant provision everywhere. I see that as being, that's the way heaven is, amen? They're not, they're not barely making, they're not barely scraping by. They, God ain't wondering, ah, oh, hope the offering's big enough to pay the electric bill this week. Can you imagine that? And so, everything, and that was my hardest to say, everything's going on there. I want to see it in operation that the world will know and see clearly that this is. That God is real. And that God is good. And that the world will be drawn to God through His goodness and through His love and through His release and through His provision and through His demonstrations of power. I, I'm so... I can see that. Now hear my heart. But almost from the day one, there has been... It, it, it's kind of come in waves. Where just the opposite has seemed to be true. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Where instead of the body being in unity, there's backbiting and division and 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 you know snapping and and whispering about one another, and it would it I it would I would be torn up. I would be seriously torn. Up. What is up with this? I preached like eight weeks in a row about loving one another, and even got to the point that people was like, "Would you just get off of that? We got it. No, we didn't get it." We didn't get it. We didn't. We still didn't grasp it. And and people still walked away bitter and angry and fuming and pouring stuff out of the mouth and 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 the thing about that we're supposed to be in a church that is so abundantly overflowing that we sow in the missions. It's it's so in my heart to to be sowing in the missions all around the world and and to be doing outreaches around the community. But you know, every one of these things takes money. And everything that has been on my heart has been stymied. It's been, it's taken hits. And and I and I, I can't just say, well, I guess that's our lot. I guess that's our lot just to barely scrimp by and or maybe not even scrimp by and, and shut down all the ministries and not support missions. And I could actually, I could look at these situations and say, well, is that all we got? Is that all there is? But within me there is something that is alive that says, God, I know what you spoke to me. I know. And even though the opposite has been presented, said, here it is. That's all you get. I'm not willing to accept that. And I'm not going to accept that. And I'll stand in the face of, of the enemy as, as he would speak to my, in my mind and lie to me. No! That's not what God spoke to me. That's not the vision. That's not the dream. That's not the word that He gave to me. And I refuse to accept that. And when your kids are out running around, give the Lord, give the Lord a hand. 
And when your kids are running around doing foolish things and they're breaking your heart and you're saying, God, are they ever going to serve you? Do not accept what the... He said that you and your household shall be saved. That your sons and daughters shall prophesy. That he speaks so many promises over our word, our word children. They shall inherit the earth. They're strong and mighty in this, in this land is what the word says. But when we see just the opposite, how the enemy comes in and tries to present the opposite to defeat us. He presents the opposite. He comes with the opposite destiny. And he says, this is all you get. You can either accept it and go down with it, or you can say no to that. And you can stand on God's promises, God's word, God's heart, and I refuse to accept anything less. Amen? Amen. And I was thinking about Pastor Scott as I was going through this, how that he's been given word after word after word. I mean, how many have heard many words spoken over him? Just every time somebody comes around and drawn to him, they just declare words over him. He's got a, the favor of God is on his life in so many ways. And, and um, here this thing hits with his ear. And I'm thinking, you know, that doesn't line up with the words that were spoken. You all follow me? So we can say, hmm, I guess he's going to be deaf in that ear because the doctor said it could be permanent. I guess he's going to be deaf in that ear the rest of his life. I guess it's always going to cause him pain. I guess he's never going to lead in worship again. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess not. I guess not. That God is doing a work. We talked about that this morning. I even see even more than what we discussed. God is doing a work that we can't even see the end of it, the fruit, the fruitfulness of it, because it's not within our eyesight, but he's doing the work. And the promises of God are yes and they're amen. And they do not, His promises haven't diminished. His word hasn't altered. He doesn't alter that which comes out of His lips. It's still the same. It's still in effect. And I'm standing with excitement because, and I told Pastor Scott right off the same day I sent him a text, I said, God's at work. And I can see, I, almost right off the bat, I can see the hand of God and what God's doing. Not to say that God calls it. I don't believe that at all. But God is using it. And I, and I haven't even shared that with... Uh, the only thing I've, person I've shared with is Bridget. I can see the hand of God at work. And then Debbie saw something that, uh, yesterday and this morning and shared that. It's, it, it tied in with what I was seeing as well. Hallelujah. But I believe... I believe with all my belief... If you can call me not you can call me wacko, that's okay. I don't care. They call Jesus all kinds of names. I'm not saying I'm him or even close to him. But he's in me. That this body, I just I believe it with all my heart. We are a place that God has called to be a station that people come in and go out, come in and go out. And that people, we send people out. We send ministers out around the world. That we are a place where the, not only are all the bills paid, but we're actually paying in advance. That we have a surplus where, the, uh, where we can support missions and do support missions. And a surplus where we support ministries. And a surplus where we can sow into the... Uh, where's Tim or Sherry? You want to, Tim, Big Tim, back there in the back. That we, we actually have uh, enough money flowing in that we have a, a budget allowed for the youth ministry. Go God! And for the children's ministry. And for all the different ministries. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. God is not a liar. And I will not accept the, 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 this perversion of what the enemy has said. Well, this is all you get. I'm not going to accept that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stand and just act just the opposite. If my finances are tight, I'm going to give. I'm going to give and I'm going to give uh, 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 even above what I normally give because I'm going to break this thing. We're breaking us. I declared this sometime back. We are, we are breaking the stronghold of hell over this body. Where we've struggled, where we've labored, where we've uh, been uh, in a point where it's like, what's going on? It's because when, there's a, when you're a threat to the enemy, he will do everything to abort your, your destiny. Amen. He will. He'll do everything that he can. And you can either accept it or you can say, uh-uh, not on my shift. Does anybody remember uh, this very uh, insignificant person in history, uh, music world, his name was, I think it was something like Elvis Presley. Any of you ever heard of him? Probably not. Not well known. 
Well, Elvis, most of you probably heard this story, but Elvis, he, remember they thought Elvis the Elvis? Because of the way he would wiggle and gyrate his hips. <laughs> but Elvis would, uh, he, the story is that it, he was raised in a church. Uh, and, and down in, I, I don't know if it's Tennessee or wherever, the South. And he was raised in a church and they said he could sing. Oh, but he'd sing those gospel songs. Tears would flow down people's eyes. And there was such an anointing upon his singing. And people said, oh, Elvis, would you sing another one? Oh, Elvis, would you do that how great thou art again? Oh, Elvis. And, they, and, and his pastor told these stories about him. He said that, that he took Elvis aside and talked to him about that you've got a call on your life. That you got there's an anointing upon your life. And the devil is going to try to pervert it. And he's going to try to distort it. And so uh, Elvis heard what he said, but did not apply what he said. And he took the road of success and finances and in honor of man, praise of men, and he went that way. We know the story. He's up there in that big white suit saying, I'm a whole shook up. And he's throwing those ribbons out there, those scarves. He pulled anybody remember that where he pulls off, off his neck the scarves and the girls down the front go, ah! and he'd give them a scarf and just kind of woo just let them go and they were and they were just swooning at his feet. It was crazy. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Too young for that, yeah. Well I stayed up late night watching his concerts and I thought, man. What is the deal? I could give me one of those things. I had hair that made myself good to sing. I don't need one of those things today, that's for sure. All right. He, he actually did lose what God had uh, for him. And I don't know, I wonder, you know, had he, had he said, you know, I'm not going to accept this. Instead of going after what the enemy has promised me for blessings and you know, worldly blessings, I'm going to go at it, op instead of going for the heights, I'm going to go at it in the opposite spirit and stay humble. And I'll stay here until God leads me. wonder what would happen if he had done that. Anybody? Good? What would happen to him? Would he be leading a, a, a big church praise and worship team where thousands coming in and getting saved during his worship? I don't know. We don't know. That's, that's a story that until we get to heaven, we probably won't know. This, this would have been what could have happened. I don't want one of those stories written about me in heaven. I want to say, this is what did happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to ask you a question today. <sighs> Has the enemy uh, taken a word, a vision that you've had, and distorted it, and actually given you a clear word about this is what I've called you to do, this is what I've called you to be, but just the opposite appears to be true. You know, there are people who uh, God has called them to work with marriages and to bring healing and wholeness in homes, but their, mar their own marriage is a mess. And like, What's going on here? Well, and so what we say is, I can't do marriage ministry. We can't even get along for 24 hours. How can we do marriage ministry? Did you stop and think that possibly that because of the calling of God on your life, to do that, that's why the enemy is hitting you so hard in that. Could, could, we, could we consider it that way? And then as we look at that, say, wait a minute. I'm not going to accept that this is all we get. I'm going to accept the fact that God says that I'm a threat to hell and that us united and us on the same page and walking together in agreement are a serious threat to the enemy. And I'm going to, we're going to say no to that. that that's all the better it gets. And we're going to say no to that. And we're going to believe that the, for this marriage to be turned around and for the glory of God to be released in, the, in our home. And that is what I'm going to accept. Nothing short of that. Amen. And go after it. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, I really, I just feel like that there's a lot of people I could see People just are hearing the heart of God in this today. Yeah. They're hearing the heart of God. And I want you to understand that this, this is, and this is really his heart. He said that we're supposed to go in the opposite spirit. If we ever feel, uh, if you're ever in a place where I've had to do this, I've had to do this, where, you know, they're, they're receiving an offering for a family that's struggling or whatever, and I'm thinking, well, i got to tighten it up too. I can get, how, what are you going to be giving it to somebody else for me? I've got bills to pay too. And you feel that spirit coming on you. You understand me? And I say, uh-oh, 
I recognize that. I'm going to come in the opposite spirit. And I'm going to give generously. And I'm going to say, shut up to you. That's right. That's, that's exactly how we do it. That's exactly how we do it. Or we can say, you know, the enemy say, oh, you need to watch this show over here. You need to, you need to spend your time doing this. And you need to spend your time doing that. And, and, and just fill your mind up with worldly entertainment. Oh, their entertainment is so wonderful. <laughs> They have such good singers, such good actors, such good TV shows. And, and the Lord's saying, see this book over here? You can actually say no to this and come in the opposite spirit and say, no, I'm going to spend time with my father. Right? I, I can't make it any. And that's about as simple as I can get it today. That's about as simple as I can get it. But there are people here today. Stand your feet, please. There are people here today that have actually... Um, Settled for less than what God has for them. Would you start music, Debbie? And, and I don't want to see that. I don't want to see anyone, anyone come up short. I don't want to see anybody come up short. I don't want to see anybody come up short. I don't want to see anyone come up short. You know, um, I thought it was cool. Daniel... <coughs> Wasn't too terribly long ago I said something about him sharing a testimony from the from up on the platform. He goes, Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> you remember that? You remember telling me that? He said, I will he said, I'll do that. I don't I don't I mean, that's not me, man. I don't I don't talk in front of people. And he could have accepted that as his destiny to hide behind other people. I'm going to play my guitar down here where they can't see me. And he could have stayed in the shadow. Right. Or he could have said, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stay where I feel more comfortable and where the enemy tells me I need to be. I'm going to step out. Yeah. And then I'm going to take the opposite approach. Right. You understand? Yeah. It gets pretty clear. Your husband giving you debts. And the first thing you want to do is withdraw from him. You want to shut him down. You want to uh, just give him the cold shoulder. But what if God says, well, wait a minute. What? You can, you might be justified in your feelings like, he had a kind of he's And God said, and, and this, can you hear the Holy Spirit saying, but I want you just to make him his favorite supper. And just love on him and put on that negligee, you know, the one you hate because it reveals everything. And you're like, not me. And you hear the Lord saying, yeah, you. Um, we're just like you're talking to me. You know, I'm not. But if you're more listen, that's okay. <laughs> Somebody worked as 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 told lies on you or done something to you, and and what you do is you start undercutting them on the job, and you start you know you're not cutting them any slack, and you're actually maybe speaking against them, but instead. You feel you hear the Spirit say, no, no, that's not how I do things. I want you to go and speak favorably about that person to other people. And I want you to go to them and actually do something kind for them. Make them a homemade pie. And if you can't cook, ask one of the cooking ladies in the church to do it and buy it from them. And take it to them. I tell you what, the way, the way to just about anybody's heart is through their stomach. Now, if you want to please uh, this lady right here, Marlene, bring her a salad. Pies will don't do anything, won't win any favors at all. So bring her a salad. All right. God has called us. The, the key thing that I see today in, in the word that God has today is that we need to recognize, recognize, recognize. If we're not aware, it says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. It said, we read that in Ephesians 4, 27. It says, don't let the enemy get advantage of us. It said, we're not ignorant of his devices. We need to be aware that this is what he's doing. That God has given us this tool called coming in the opposite spirit that, that will break, the, it'll break a yoke. It'll break a stronghold. It'll keep our hearts tender before God. He takes that same that same spirit that, is, that causes us to have victory, 
and comes at us with an opposite, he turns things around in the opposite way to present our destinies in the opposite direction so that we actually feel like that we've been defeated and we just shut down. And we need to recognize that, guys. We need to recognize and say, uh -uh. you know, and, and this is a classic. Now I'll try to stop with that. This is a classic. You can see somebody, you know, that they're in worship, they're just shaking them to the power of God, and you can just see them just like, like, uh, just like they've got a hold of some 440 or 220 and they're just shaking like crazy. And their lips are quivering. And you know they got a word, but they're so afraid. They just, they just bite their lips to the point blood's running down. And and, and so what we've done is we've, we've let fear have its way. And if we come in the opposite spirit and say, I will not, I've not been given the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And I declare boldly what God's given me instead of letting the fear have its way with me. We come in the opposite. The very thing the enemy's trying to destroy us with or keep us hemmed in, we come in the opposite spirit. All right. All right. I'm going to open up the altars right now. If anyone has, that you have a specific prayer request, uh, and specific might be a, just a general request, uh, specifically you need to, you need to quit. God help me to quit listening to the enemy. God help me to see your plan. Help me to see this thing and help me to implement it. You can see it, but but you you've tried it, and every time you try it, it just seems to flop, and and it just seems like so you revert back to your oh, the old ways. God said, "No, I didn't tell you to go back to it. I told you how to deal with it, and I, and I intend for you to continue with it until breakthrough comes. Continue loving those who hate you. Doesn't say do it once or twice. Do it. Do it. Even if you have to do it till their their dying breath. Love them." Those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. So, Father, uh, I'm just going to pray over the body today. But if you if you have a specific need that you would like to have prayer about or with, I want you to come here. And we're going to pray with you that you're going to get victory in your life. <clears throat> Father, I pray for the body of Christ. Father God, I pray that we would be a people who uh, are clearly aware. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We can see what he's trying to do. We can see how he's working. We can see how he's operating. We can see the, the flow that he has been working in my life. And God, that we'll be a people to recognize it. And that we will, we will actually come at that, that attack from the enemy in the opposite direction. But in alignment with your will. Father, we will be a people that will... Uh, have your heart in everything that we do. So, Father, I pray today, God, is uh, for each one of us, God, that we would be very, very aware, whether it's on the job, in the house, whether it's in our finances, whether it's in our health, that we will uh, we will take that opposite approach. Recognize when it's the enemy, and we'll take that the, your approach, which would be the opposite way, and we'll step into that and press into it. Father, I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. If that's you today, that you want, you would like to have someone to agree with you in prayer, it can be in your home, it can be in your finances, whatever it is, I want you to come. I want you to come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. We're going to have a meal uh, out there in the foyer very shortly, and I want you to come. If that's you, God has spoken your heart this morning. God has spoken your heart.